It's been a while for the One Up Nitro National Series, a couple of weeks away, but we are back once again at the Martinsville Speedway for 80 laps to complete race number five of the 2024 One Up Nitro National Series season. This historic half mile ovals caused plenty of hurt feelings, bent fenders, and great racing action over the years, and I'm sure it's going to provide the same, if not better, here tonight for our Nitro National Series regulars. And alongside me to bring you all the action once again is Duke Anzac for today's race. It is great to have you with us. What more can you say about Martinsville? It's the, 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 the classic beaten and banging short track that everyone either loves or hates. Wonder which it'll be today. Well, I, I, I have a feeling we're going to have a good mix um, amongst our drivers, just the based on the way that Martinsville always seems to go. I mean, you're right about the bump in the banging. This is such a tight, narrow racetrack with tight turns, uh, slow speed corners where you're just pushing all the way around. So, um, hey, somebody's going to come out on top today. They're going to be pretty happy with the race. But uh, many of the others, I'm sure, uh, will have adverse opinions of how it, how it all went down uh, by the end of this one. Absolutely. Tempers, they may flare, especially if we get an early incident that could set someone back quite a ways here at the start of this race. As we can bring you now, the starting lineup for tonight's 80-lap, 40-mile contest, Nikki Martinez gets her first pole of the season and the first for her new race team, the SRA team, and it's going to be a great start for the 47 Dodge. Skylar Taylor gets a career best start of second alongside her. Nick Breeding, a career best start for him in third, as is Tegan Fox in fourth. Jensen Nomina completes the top five, but we've got some big names starting deeper in the field. We've got Earl Sears starting 21st. Kev Shearer right alongside him. He's been a force to be reckoned with this season so far. Elijah Ironhouse was so strong at Daytona. Ryan Reed as well. Riley Hooper, uh, there's so many big names. And la last race's winner, Mike Edwards, starts all the way back in 32nd. It's not impossible to make your way from the back to the front here, but you got to be careful because the leader comes up on the back of the field quite fast here. You're right. You know, and, and this is going to be the kind of race where we're probably not going to see any pit stops here unless you have a big problem. So you're really going to have to be uh, full go 100% from the start of this race if you're starting that far back uh, to get up to the front. And then for those starting up front, you really got to play defense for this whole thing. Make sure you can stay on that bottom lane. Make sure nobody gets down there and uh, pushes you up to the top. That could be detrimental to your race. So we'll see how it all plays out soon. I, I'm sure I'm excited to watch and see what all these drivers do. Uh, in the opening laps of this one it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun so with that being said we have 42 drivers ready to take on the paper clip here at martinsville we are ready to bring you the action for 80 laps this is the one up nitro national series at martinsville speedway with the green flag set to get us underway in just a short moment Getting set for some slam-banging short track action here at Martinsville. It is Martinez and Taylor on row one. The green flag is in the air and we are underway at Martinsville. Diving it off, breaking hard for turn one. Martinez gets the jump on the 3 We'll see if Skylar Taylor is able to maintain a side-by-side -side presence on the outside or if Nick Breeding in the 76 will be able to miss strike into three. Yeah, it looks like Nick Breeding is going to get some good position on that 3 car. So you really have to try to get to the bottom here at Martinsville. There's not a lot of banking in the corners here. So running the outside lane is pretty difficult. If you can if you can get on the throttle, the sooner than those people on the bottom, you might have a chance. It looks like Skylar Taylor uh, still has some fight left in that 03 car on the outside lane in the opening laps of this one. Yeah, he entered this race, I believe, second in the points. So this could be a big day for him to get this race started but he, and he's still hanging tough on the outside of Nicky Martinez I wonder if Nick Breeding will fall, let him fall in line here now yes he does a little bit of get, well maybe not because Taylor seems to like that high groove even if it's not really gaining him that much time but I think there's going to be a lot of give in this opening segment of the race as yes now Breeding lets Taylor into line yeah, that's probably a good call from that 03 car. Get get settled in here. It's only lap four. You got 80 laps here today, so uh, you got to be very careful to start this thing. Just keep keep that position. It's Tegan Fox, meanwhile, started in fourth, has slipped a little ways back to about eighth or ninth. You see Austin Hiller in the 84 for D4 Motorsports trying to find a way past. Looks like he'll be able to do it going into one. Kanalka in the seven trying to do the same. But back up front, Martinez leading her, I believe, her first laps of the season in this race as Andrew Langley gets underneath points leader James Ellison. This is for the last spot in the top five. 
Yeah, this is a good position, or at least it was for this O2 car. Just being on the bottom, we got three wide farther back in the pack, though. It's the 92 on the inside of two other cars. Looks like it's all going to work out. Yeah, Ryan Griffin, Henry Thomas, Ashton Blevins. It looks like the 21 backs out of that wise decision. You don't want to go very wide here because you will lose all, a whole lot of time as Ryan Griffin gets the better of that position as Langley and Ellison continue to fight over fifth place with Hiller and Fox not too far behind. I'll tell you what, for defending a position right now, the outside lane has been pretty good. Um, you know, we, we saw the 03 car defend uh, up front for a little while. It didn't end up paying off, but now the 31 has stayed right with this 02 car, but it's the entry of the corner that you're going to struggle so much because the people on the bottom really can send it off in there, slide up the track a little bit, and then get that launch off the exit, almost like diamonding uh, the corner a little bit. So uh, that's where you really lose your time on the outside lane. Now we move up uh, to what could become a close battle for the third position. With between Nick Breeding and Jensen Nomina running a special paint scheme for this May the 4th race as he tries to size up the 76 of Nick Breeding, trying to get the final podium place away. But back at the front of the field, Skylar Taylor is keeping Nicky Martinez in his sights. Will be interesting to see if this 03 can find a way around because if he can finish up front, win this race, he'll be your new points leader if things stand the way they are. True. Only three points out of the out of the lead over James Ellison uh, coming into this race. So right now, uh, even is a really great position for Skylar Taylor. We got one in the pit lane. Oh, and it's the 84. We were just talking about him. Austin Hiller having such a strong run for D4 Motorsports. It comes undone. We're being told it's a leak a, f a leak in the fuel line on that 84, and it sent him to the pit lane for service. So he will lose a lap while they patch up the holes and them back out onto the racetrack. But that's a tough break for a team that really needed a good run to stay up in the points. Yeah, now everybody's got to watch out for some, maybe some gasoline on the racetrack. It's probably going to be all right, though. Uh, and it's good that the 84 is back out there uh, on the track now, maybe maybe with an opportunity um, to get back in this thing uh, if some cautions fall the way of the 83 car or 84 car. Meanwhile, uh, out front still is the 47. Nicky Martinez having a fantastic day so far. L led the thir first 13 laps and uh, no sign right now uh, uh, of any real challenge or, or any uh, uh, chance to lose this lead. So Martinez having a great, great run so far. The thing, though, the thing about this is, though, you see the back of the field here and then Austin Hiller further behind. Nicky Martinez is not that far behind him. So... I would expect them to be able to catch the, the back of the field relatively quickly, maybe in the next 20 laps or so. That, that will be a factor because when you catch lap traffic here, it's really hard for them to get out of the way. That could be the opportunity Skylar Taylor has been looking for. It's true, and if you look at the back of the pack, I mean, it is absolutely too wide all the way around. I mean, they are fighting for those positions farther back. Um, we showed you a shot a minute ago, and, it, and it's just going to be chaos once these leaders get there. So for Skylar Taylor, for Nick Breeding right now, um, it, it's going to be critical, absolutely critical, to stay as close as you can to Nicky Martinez so that you have the opportunity to capitalize uh, if Nicky Martinez isn't able to get through traffic very well. It's going to be uh, very interesting once that happens. I think people uh, probably right now just waiting around, uh, hanging in with the leader right now, and just, just once they get there, that's when the action's really going to pick up. Yeah, I think what the 76 and the 62, what they're doing, they're saving a little bit of equipment for when the lead, two leaders catch the lap track, and then they'll cruise right up to the back of them. And that will be the opportunity that them, and maybe even Andrew Langley in the 02 and James Ellison, that could be what they're oh. looking for. As Nomina runs a little wide in the turn one, that could open the door for his quasi-teammate Langley to make a move. Yeah, that didn't look intentional. Uh, it seems to be all right for the 62, but yeah, it looks like got a little bit uh, uh, front front end tight going into the, into the corner right there and slid up the track, uh, those front tires sliding. Here's the 84 with, with a little bit of a tire advantage um, on the back of the pack, but maybe an equipment advantage as well. Caught up to the back of the pack and is now starting to uh, make his way. Uh, back up through the field trying to maintain uh, being one lap down to the leader Nicky Martinez. The problem he's going to face though is when Martinez catches these other cars and starts lapping them because 
once once she ca laps a few more few of these cars, those cars will be in the free pass position, and it will no longer be the 84 in the position that he needs. So he's got to hope for a caution before the leaders ca catch the back of the field here. Yep. Yeah, absolutely true. So, um, hey, that it it could happen. We're in Martinsville. It's the paperclip. There's a lot of beating and banging going on uh, around this short half mile speedway that we have here. So, um, it, it any, anything is possible. Uh, so hope hope is not yet lost for Austin Hill. No, but looking now a little further back, this is the battle for 11th position. Henry Thomas on the back bumper of Ryan Griffin in the 92. We've honestly have, have expected a little more out of these two cars this season. Ryan Griffin, he might be facing a little bit of a sophomore slump this season. I don't know, but he, he, he's he been up front a few times, but nowhere near what we expected out of the Finn Guy Saitomi team that have dominated races in the past and won so many in that 92 car. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, we expected that car to be running up front for, for a significant portion of the races this season we just have not seen it so far and you know solid uh middle of the pack right now um but you really uh the performance has not been what we expected by by any stretch of the imagination but hey that gives us opportunities to talk about new faces at the front of the field like this 47 car of nicky martinez like the 76 of nick breeding this 03 car of course won the championship last year with a different driver so skylar taylor is a new face at the front as well but in all honesty, Nikki Martinez, she's no stranger to the front of the field. She won it four of the years last year for Kings Motorsports. Le left the team after it shut down, found a new, started up a new team, a new Dodge effort. Hasn't had the results she's wanted so far, but this is a fantastic run so far in the opening stages at Martinsville. It's true, and it, you know, this car looks good out front. I mean, Nikki Martinez has been wheeling it uh, so far this year, and I, I mean, it's, it's great. You know, this is a driver that we've seen a lot of great things from. We're, we're expecting a lot of great things from in the future. And right now, leading the way uh, is the 47 car. And starting to pull away from Skylar Taylor, That's that could become critical in this race. You know, as you start to pass the lap cars here, you want to get, you want to build that gap. You want to have people in between yourself and second place. So, Nikki Martinez right now just working on extending the lead uh, little by little, lap by lap. And, and once you get to the lappers, you have to, you have to, get through them as quickly as you can uh, to, to, to make it all work out. Yeah, and you can see her lead has grown to about a full, to pretty much just over a second. We'll see if Taylor's able to knock a dent into that, and he does by about two tenths. So he's not he's not out of striking distance quite yet, but he's got to get a move on, especially considering that wall of cars are fast approaching. Yeah, and it's this is going to be very fascinating. So we saw the 84 car of Austin Hiller catch up to the back of the pack and it looked like he was going to start passing cars and he had a little bit of a tire advantage. He, of course, has a bit of an equipment advantage. He qualified 11th for this race in comparison to those running in the back. Um, and as you can see, that 84 car will be the first one that the 47 gets to. So it is not easy uh, to pass the lap traffic here at Martinsville. And this is going to be a fascinating section of this race as soon as as they make it to the lappers. And the problem for the 84 is once the leader passes him again, he'll be two laps down. And that's much harder to recover from. It is. Yeah, I, two laps down is, is uh, significantly farther back. I mean, you know, because you're never going to get a free pass. You're, uh, you, you might get a wave around depending, but it, it's really unlikely. So, um, yeah, you really want to avoid going two laps down in this race if you can. But but so far, we've been green for the entirety of this race. So um, the, the likelihood of caution coming out feels as if it's waning. This race has a, a pretty green feel to it. A lot of the field right now is strung out single file with the exception of those at the very back of the pack in the last several rows. But even then uh, are starting to get pretty strung out at this point. So. Uh, yeah, cars all the way around at this point as the leader has caught uh, the back of the pack, number 18. That's Linda Vaughn making her one-up debut in the 18 for Jeff Bolton Racing. That car making its first start since Daytona and started 28th, 
fell back a bit, but honestly, I think the goal for that 18, just to make some laps around this place. And you see the 72 of Kadir Yashov making his first start in the 1UP Racing Series as well for Roberts Racing. He's also quite a ways back, but he might be able to make some gains further on in this race. We'll see what happens with him. Ryan Reed, though, a bit of a surprise to see back here. He was He's had some strong runs this season. Mike Edwards, who won at Las Vegas, he's also back here. Not really what we expected out of that 60, but maybe that car is just suited for higher speed tracks rather than the short track of Martinsville. As it looks as though Martinez going into three and four. Looks like some cars are slow are oh. scattering to avoid a crash in the back oh. end and Martinez oh. caught up in this crash. Heartbreak for the longtime leader of this race, Nicky Martinez, who dominated this race, now is out of it. Wow, that is I mean there's always the danger of that here at Martinsville. It looked like Whatever it was probably started around the middle of the pack as Earl Sears started 21st, was running around there in this race, and still the stack up r continues until the pace car gets out um, on the track. And here's Nicky Martinez making this heartbreaking drive uh, in the pit lane. And Skylar Taylor now with damage as well. Yeah, that's the top two in this oh, race boy. with severe damage on their race cars this 47 i believe is going to be out of this race we'll see if the 03 follows her there that hands the lead over to nick breeding in the 76 what can he do for the rest of this race but you're right it was earl sear that was stopped in the middle of the track that started this whole mess and unfortunately for nikki martinez after such a fantastic ra race that was going for her now it's going to end in a retirement here on lap 38. wow that is incredibly disappointing for her that whole team and we'll, we'll see we'll have to get a look at what happened soon here but for now we'll take a look through the field here's the ones who have not been involved so keep a lookout for your favorite driver looks like Earl Sear is going to return to this race so this was Earl Sear he was running just in front of his teammate Braden Varga when all of a sudden his car starts slowing in the middle of three and four that's where he tries to get out of the way as best he can but I don't know if dead stop oh and benjamin snyder oh. also had a problem and got caught up and it's just a chain reaction from here yeah. mike edwards linda vaughn and of course nikki martinez with probably the biggest story involved in this one oh. on more contact for the six that looked like the 16 austin scott yeah yeah that is bizarre i would see i mean his car just completely turned off that is that is a fascinating thing here's the melee afterwards as everybody caught up to the leaders who had just crashed it was kind of a chaotic moment but yeah skylar taylor with damage as well and then this is the contact that we saw in the pit lane they're just stopped there behind the 72 can, can no longer move wow so it looks like the cars are starting to scatter in front of martinez trying to go just did just, just was too indecisive on which way to go to avoid it and just plowed straight to the back of the 18. that i it's, it's an unfortunate break for Nikki Martinez. It really is, because she had the dominant car of this race. Now it's going to finish 38th as a result. But It's true. The life, you, you, yeah. approach, you approach that accident so quickly. I mean, it, you, you really don't have a lot of time to react, and you also don't want to get on the brakes too hard because you don't want to get wrecked from the drivers who can't see uh, through your car behind. So, yeah, like you said, a tough, tough break. But now we've got a new leader in the seven, uh, 76 of Nick Breeding. Uh, and this will be interesting, especially with three uh, lap down vehicles starting to the inside of this 76. One of which being Austin Hiller, because like we said, he got involved in the crash, so he, so there was no free pass under this caution. As we get back racing at the halfway point of this race, 38, 39 laps to go. And I don't know, a lot of, all three of these cars, I believe, have damage, so we'll see about Earl Sear who was in the middle of the pack. We, we've known that car to have some speed, but not exactly today. But this is going to be really good for the 76 of Nick Breeding, who is going to drive away while all of his competition is stuck on the outside lane. Now the 62 has gotten through, but behind that, our 02 car is just stuck, along with all these other people behind those lap down cars. This is going to be intense. Yeah, but honestly, Nick Breeding out in the lead of this race. This has been a great run for him so far. He was going to probably get a top five anyway, even without this crash. Now he's in position to win it. As to see Austin, uh, Austin Scott with some more damage repair, he rejoins. Let's see if he's able to blend back in. 
Ooh, he's almost got to Logan Williams there, but he's able to make to rejoin without much issue. But going back to what I was saying about Nick Caridi, this is a strong run for him and for that team. You know, BTB Motorsports has been here for a long time. They've had oh, their struggles, to say the least, in the Superstar Series. Last week at Silverstone was their first start of the season with, with just one of their cars, Brandon Beal. So they've had their fair share of struggles up there, but down here in the Nitro National Series, they've had fast equipment, and it's showing here today. Nick Breeding comfortably out in front of the 62 car. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the 62 um, and and the 76 have been putting on a show for third place uh, for, for the majority of this race, and now that battle uh, is for the lead at this point. Now they have that buffer of Austin Hiller between them, who, who looks like the 84 has maintained much of the speed of that car. The damage is not impacting uh, that driver so much right now. And he's just sitting there in third place, uh, not actually in third place. Of course, he's a lap down, but he's sitting in the third position on the track, being a good buffer car for these two to be able to fight it out. And we saw the 62 get pretty close, but he has had some issues today uh, sliding into the corner uh, with, with some uh, right front lockup sending that car up the track so we'll see what happens uh as he gets closer and closer to the 76 car nick breeding how how close can he get uh, before sliding up the track and, and how how much of a challenge can he actually put there's there it happened again sliding up the track tight tight in the front end it's just going to be a tough tough uh ladder to climb if that keeps happening and for what it's worth right now the top six in this race all looking for their first career wins in the one up nitro national series that is good for this series that we have so many competitive drivers in this field but Nick Breeding he we, he did, he ran the trucks last year for Kings Motorsports he made the playoffs finished top 10 in points that earned him a ride with B2B Motorsports here in the Nitro National Series and he's had some strong runs he was he was I believe 14th in the points going into this race so he's doing a solid job in that 76 and this is just putting another mark on his resume for his future because this is a great race for him and if he can hang on to win it my goodness that'll be a big celebration for the btv guys certainly will and a, a well-deserved one you know ran in third for the first uh almost half of this race and then obviously the two leaders caught up in accidents he made a good decision went to the outside was able to avoid having any damage and now has found himself in the lead of this race and doing a great defensive job he, you know he, he had some challenge from the 62 there were two times that the 62 car got really close but then ended up sliding up the track and now has not been able to regain that time it's about a half a second uh between these two cars so not a ton of time uh, between them but a little bit of breathing room for our leader nick breeding between himself and jensen nomina so this is going to be uh fascinating to watch how this race develops and will there be enough time in this race for them to catch the back of the field again i'm not sure but uh it's going to be close and it's going to be interesting if they do you've also got to keep in mind that for jensen nomina in the 62 a, se a half a second here is a lot more distance than half a second at, say, Las Vegas, where we were yep. last time out, because they're going so much faster there. So a half second here means a lot more. So Breeding is able to keep the gap between two and six tenths, and that's honestly all he needs. As long as he does not give the bottom to the 62 at any point, because the 62, if he decides to make, to dive into t into the corner here, as he gets a little tight going into the co into turn one there, if he decides to dive into one of these corners, Breeding's got no defense. He's got to plant that car on that curb in the corners to try and keep his spot secure. Yeah, he's doing a great job so far. I, I mean, the 62 car keeps keeps giving himself an opportunity, and then uh, once again has slid up the track here, and now might even lose track position to Austin Hiller, who is fighting to get back on the lead lap uh, with these cars. Not for position is this now, but our second place driver stuck on the outside lane, outside of the 84, and this is going to be huge for Nick Breeding, who is going to drive away with this two wide battle, not even for position right behind this is incredible uh and the 62 now must be kicking himself for uh getting tight into the corner that time uh because it is going to pay 
big dividends for Nick Breeding, who's driving away. I think what's happening behind these guys, Andrew Langley's trying to give the 62 a helping hand to try and get past the 84, and he does. So give the 62 back the second place on the racetrack. That's going to cost the 0-2, though, because here comes Kanalka in the 7, diving underneath him for birds. A strong run for the 7 car, of course. But for... That could have been a could have been a lot worse for Jensen Nomina, but he is able to remain in second. He's only eight tenths back, and with 20 laps to go, he can start chasing down Nick Breeding once again. If you look now at Logan Williams, who's made his way up into the top five. Strong run for the 83 once again. But yeah, the 62 has to be thinking about the end of this race, what he needs to do to try and get a bump a fender underneath that 76 to try and get the win away. Yeah, you're right. The, the 62 really needs to start widening the entry of the corner, I think, and, and, and getting down, maybe doing a bit of a late apex here um, and, and cutting down the track maybe uh, halfway through the corner so that you can get a straighter exit off the course, just get the grip down better. That car has been struggling on entry. Uh, whenever he gets close to the 76, it's just been uh, a, a nothing but trouble. So here he is once again very close to our leader um, and let's see what happens going into turn one this time for the 62 who is right on his bumper we're looking at Skylar Taylor now who is back on the track it looks, the like, Noma, looks like Noman went wide again yes he absolutely did um, and that's just going to be really tough so hey I'll tell you what though I wanted to mention the 83 car because he started in 14th he, he restarted um, after the caution uh, hanging just at the back of the top 10 and since that uh, Since that point in this race has been on a tear It's made it all the way up to fifth place and now is within sniffing distance of our battle for the lead Of course this 84 car is up there as well uh, Fighting one lap down, but uh, you know still cars to pass for the 83 But I, I think that he has got a fast fast machine right now at this point of the race I'm not sure if there's gonna be enough time for anyone other than the 62 to really have much of a shot at the lead but uh hey you never know what happens it's it, it is martinsville we've seen uh crazier things in this very race <laughs> so it, it's, it's it's always something to keep an eye on yeah even the lead isn't safe here at martinsville we've seen that already in this race jensen nomina though fighting a really tight race car he cannot make that corner into turn one he seems to be fine here in three and four it's that entry into one that always seems to get him and now with only 15 laps to go, time is running out for the 62. Both of these drivers trying to notch their maiden win. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, those lap cars, the, the very back of the field, uh, at, becoming ever uh, more apparent, ever closer uh, to the front pack of cars. And there's no uh, letting off now. If you're Nick Breeding, you can't uh, look at those cars and say that you, that you can just back off a little bit and not catch them in this race. you got to go as hard as you can because the 62 right on the bumper. So uh, Nick Breeding it might just catch those cars in this race, and that could change everything as we've seen uh, already today. So this is going to be fascinating to see what happens, what Nick Breeding is able to do to try to stay ahead of the 62 car. Yeah, we're closing in on 10 to go, and looks like Kanalka is actually diving to the inside of the 84. This could be important to bring the 7 into contention for this race win if that driver can make the make passes on the 62 and the 76. We haven't seen what Kanalka can do in this race, so going to be worth watching for sure. If we look now at Skylar Taylor, who is still at the back of the pack with a lot of damage, but still on the lead lap for now. Yeah, and this, this back of the pack is, is just struggling right now, but I'm not sure. They might catch him with three, maybe two or three to go. Is If I had to make a guess, I'm not sure. Um, it's going to be interesting. The 7, however, has cleared the 84 car. So, um, yeah, as soon as that 7 starts to re, you know, get get some heat out of those tires and, and re really gain, gain that rhythm back, uh, might might come into contention with this thing. Meanwhile, the 83 is going to pass the 84 as well, it looks like, in the next lap or two. And then uh, there's a train of cars behind the 83 uh, who might be able to get by as well. So this this could get interesting if they do catch that lap traffic. We'll have a lot of cars right with our leaders. Yeah, you see the 83 of Williams has cleared the 84, and they are now trying to close up. This could very well be a four-car battle for the win, as we have now eight to go. 
Nomina doing whatever he can to try and make a pass on the 76, but he's just not doesn't have the car under him to make the turn. He's way too tight. But never say never. We've seen bump and runs happen here before, and that may be what it takes to get Nomina to victory lane. Do you think maybe uh, Jensen Nomina should use the force? <laughs> it's not out of the realm of possibility on this. We are Martinsville. <laughs> of course, of course. But for Nick Breeding, he's just got to hang on for six more laps, and he can celebrate with BTV Motorsports for his and their first career wins in one-up competition. Yeah, I... I, I, I... I'll tell you what, this 62 car, we might not be giving uh, Jensen Nomina enough credit. I mean, he has stayed right with Nick Breeding uh, throughout this entire run. Oh, I hate run. to interrupt. We got a smoker, and it's Ryan, oh, Griffin. Ryan Griffin. Wow. Out of the race with five to go. That's a very heart heartbreaking situation for Ryan Griffin, who is already doing rough in the points as it is. This is going to send him even further down the table. Tough break for the Finn Guys I Told Me team and Ryan Griffin, especially as we now come to four laps to go. Yeah, Ryan Griffin, 16th in the points, 43 points behind the leader, and it's only getting worse after that. A really tough break after running a, 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 what would have been a complete race today, uh, start to finish for that car, um, now has gone up in smoke. Meanwhile, um, everybody has started to pass this 84 car who I, I believe is suffering from the damage at this point in the run and, and it is getting close to the end of this race and they are getting closer and closer to the lap cars. So I, I don't know what this 76 is going to be able to do, but right now he's got a really solid gap. One of the biggest gaps we've seen over the 62 car in second place. So that could be critical uh, for this race as, as the laps click away so quickly. And if Nomina runs wide again in one and two, he might even lose second to, and third to Kanalka and to Williams. So he's got to be on top of his game to hang on the second because I think the wind's starting to slip away as we're coming to the white flag this time. It's true for Nomina. I mean, it's been a fantastic race, and, and you're not really close enough at this point uh, as they take the white flag to really make a move. Of course, Skylar Taylor is right there in front of our leader who is dealing with dirty air for the first time since the restart. Coming for three and four now for the final time, Nick Breedings driving for B2B Motorsports. They've had a season from hell to start this season. They get to celebrate now as Nick Breeding picks up the win at Martinsville Speedway for their first win in one-up competition, for his first win in one-up competition. What a virtuoso performance from this 76. Jensen Nomina brings it home second, a career best finish for him and for Kanalka in third. Logan Williams fourth, a great drive through the field. James Ellison gets another top five. That'll extend his points lead at the end of this race. Great run for him. Andrew Langley, first career top ten for him. As is for Tegan Fox in seventh, first top ten of the season for Fox. Riley Hooper started deep in the field. He came all the way through to finish eighth ahead of Aiden Clare in ninth. Robert Weaver, who took the fastest lap point, completes the top ten. But for Nick Breeding, what a fantastic race, a great first career win. And for Nicky Martinez, what a what a disappointing end to a great, promising day. Yeah, that is that is extremely tough for Nicky Martinez, who led uh, the first half of this race in dominating fashion. And, uh, yeah, just uh, extremely unlucky. There was nothing anybody could have done. The three car just completely stopped on the track, and, and then the avoiding uh, just wasn't going to happen uh, for the entire field so um hey nicky martinez great run but at the end of the day nick breeding uh was the one who really came out on top and, and capitalized on what happened and, and did so um in a fantastic way it was great to watch uh, a dominating performance from that car so from duke Anzac and from myself as well we say goodbye from martinsville speedway we'll see you again next time for Pro for the race at provo motorsports park for race number six of the season the nitro national series gets a standing start race next we'll help you'll join us for that as well but for now so long from martinsville congrats to nick breeding he and btb motorsports break their goose eggs in quite an impressive fashion.